and welcome back to another video. It's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you something I'm notoriously bad at and have been stalling on. This video I meant to film yesterday and I was so, so afraid that it was gonna turn out badly that I actually cleaned for the entire day. My house is spotless on the bright side, but on the not so bright side, I think it's time that I finally get this done. So today we are going to be making some polymer clay earrings. So these are really popular, at least they are for me when I'm scrolling through TikTok. I seem to see these a lot. Um, and I also seem to see these a lot specifically focused on like wedding bouquets. And I thought it might be nice to make myself a pair to wear on my bachelor art weekend or maybe at my bridal shower coming up. Um, my themes are like purples and greens, so I've got a couple of different green colors, some are slightly used, um, and I bought this, which I thought was just a plain white, but it turns out it's actually a glitter white. Um, I was wondering why there were two different whites available, um, so I just grabbed one and I grabbed the glitter one, so that's where we're at. Um, but this is kind of the color palette I'm going to stick to. I also kind of wanted a brown for like the centers of some of the flowers, which I did not grab, unfortunately, and I do not have, do not have in my collection. So I'm just going to be using whatever scraps I have and I'll just paint the brown small spots over top of it when I am done. Um, this idea also came because when I was in the clearance section the other day at, I think, Michael's, um, I did find these, like, findings, basically, that just came out and ready for me. I actually tried my hand at making some of these earrings not too long ago with a friend of mine, and they're fine. Um, I did wear them out. I don't hate these. Um, I don't know. I just feel like this kind of, like, rose design that I did wasn't quite... The way that I wanted it to turn out, I think it could have been a lot better. I made these and I also wanted to do like kind of a another thing here with these. Um, I, I hate these. I'm so upset with the way that they turned out. They're just so bumpy and crusty and upsetting um, <laughs> to look at. Um, I wanted to make this a really big hole and then kind of do like a, a tassel situation, but it's, it's, it's not cute. Um, so I've never worn these. I kind of hide them away and pretend that they never happened. Um, so, I don't know, I've been really nervous to start this project because I I don't think it's gone well for me previously, so I don't know. Time to stop stalling and get started. I did kind of take some inspiration off of um, some Etsy listings. Um, I will link the original design. This is it was originally a sunflower design that I've kind of converted to be more of like a bridal look with uh, flowers more similar to mine. But the it was just super pretty and I actually do intend to buy myself a pair of those. Um, sunflower earrings when the time comes, but um, yeah, I'll leave a link to the original sunflower earring designs and I'll put a picture of them over here, but I liked the teardrop shape, I thought it was really pretty, and I liked the kind of like coming out from the side growth that it had going on, and frankly, I need a reference because I've never done this before and I'm so, so afraid, so I kind of drew out some schematics of what I think these things are going to look like, how I want the colors to lay out, and all that, so... I think it's time I stop stalling and just finally make this happen. So I am going to start by rolling out my white because that is going to be my base color and creating that teardrop shape. All right, so I got them relatively close in shape and size. I think when they're on either side of the face, it'll be too hard to tell that they're not completely perfect. Um, but I think this looks pretty good. I also don't think I actually appropriately showed how glittery this actually is. Um, but yeah, it's definitely super glittery. Um, but it's a nice, like, subtle, like, it twinkles when you turn your head kind of thing. So I actually quite like it. So I'm going to get started with the flowers that go in the bottom section here. These are going to be, I don't know, I feel like the, I'm kind of just going to call it like a lysianthus sort of situation. I originally wanted like wisteria and lilacs, but those were surprisingly hard to find. Um, and I do want this big flower to be a dark purple, and then I'm going to have the little flowers be the lighter one. So I'm just going to open this up, and it's called Candy Grape, by the way. This is by Craftsmart. This is the Michaels brand claim, quite sure. Um, but once I get in here, I believe the master plan is going to be to again sort of create like teardrop shapes and then add in like little embossed sort of indents to create the like texture that you see in the petals so i'm just going to start off with the teeniest tiniest little ball for each of these feathers 
probably even tinier than this, but I feel like I'm going to kind of test out the way that this looks first. And I'm going to pinch it a little bit towards the base, flatten it on the top. And I'm just going to take these tweezers and I'm going to create a little baby indent in there. And just fold a little bit on top of itself. Mm, you might want a little bit brighter. I feel like these tweezers are going to be my, my best friends as I'm building this, but I'm probably going to make all of the same size balls like all at once to make sure that all the petals look the same. And then when I have my balls, smush and then shape. Honestly, the thinner ones kind of look cool. Honestly, I might just go super thin like that and like pinch and give it that like three dimensional thing. I kind of like that better. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with, and I think I might make the flowers first and then put them on the white after. Alright, so I finished up. Uh, the design changed quite a bit uh, because I made the flowers too big. I ended up remaking the second flower, which was incidentally this worse looking one, I'm pretty sure. Actually, it was this one. This one I remade because I made it too big the first time. Um, just some tips and tricks that I've kind of picked up as I've been doing this. Uh, scraping bad. Don't like cut through things like on the tip, just like indent and you can like pull and indent a little bit uh, but like a pull up and down is way better than trying to drag through because then it creates those sort of like jaggedy edges um i have the uh isopropyl alcohol that i'm using to kind of get out some of these uh, fingerprints that I have and any like again dirt dust hair whatever uh, and it's picking up pretty well I've actually never used that trick before today because I don't normally keep isopropyl alcohol around the house but I had it out for uh, soap making which I don't know if you guys have seen that video or not yet uh, I think you might have um, but I did get the isopropyl alcohol specifically for that and now that I have it it's working pretty pretty gosh darn great and I am enjoying it um, but a lot of this kind of turned into like really teeny tiny dots and they had to be way way tinier than I was anticipating and I don't know which of these I think is maybe like the better one. I think there's pieces parts of each side of this that I like a lot. Um, I like this flower better, um, but I like this leaf better, but I like this leaf better, but I like these lavenders better, but I like the size of these dots more, but I like the roundness of these dots more, and I like the spacing of these dots more, and the size of this dot, and not so much that dot. I don't know. Um, so, I don't know. I think they make like a nice set because there is definitely not one that is better than the other which will be good for me because you know there's going to be things i'll like about both sides of it right now i am just making a little hole in the top so that i can attach the jump ring to it and i'm going to kind of like smooth out these sides so i actually bought a super tiny toaster oven from like the thrift shop so that i don't have to keep putting polymer clay in my big oven plus it heats up faster so um i also like that for once i actually went in and used all the same brand of clay so all the baking directions are exactly the same 275 for 15 minutes per quarter inch and this is about a quarter inch um i tried to like match it to the width of these uh for context there and I am so, so horrified that I am just going to ruin the shape of this by peeling it up. So here's something that I want you guys to drop in the comments. If you have a good way to get polymer clay off of a surface without disrupting the shape, I'm listening. That's all I'm going to say about that. That always just gets so stuck and I don't know if I just I need to like buy something special to do this on but I end up just kind of doing that and hoping that it doesn't jack up the back too horribly bad all prepped and ready so I'm just gonna drop it in my teeny tiny toaster oven 
close the top and I'm gonna make sure this is on 275 I'm pretty sure it is from the last time I did anything and 15 minutes right here and it'll buzz when it's done alrighty oven mitt on the ding has happened It's still a little hot, so I am going to let this cool off. Here they are in all of their glory, fully cooled. Looking beautiful. I love them. I'm actually really, really pleased. I know I want this center green bit to be brown, so I'm gonna actually gonna take a, what's called Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel. And I don't even, I didn't even bring out a, uh, a palette because I'm using such a small amount. I'm literally just gonna Kind of squeeze it out on this tiny little paintbrush. I really just kind of shove the paintbrush in and use that paint to kind of go over top. Here you kind of have the before and after. Um, it's really hard to kind of get in there without getting on the purple, but I think that's passable and I do like it a little bit better. Uh, obviously this just feels a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna paint this one and then I'm going to Paint the back, because that is disgusting. I don't even know what half that junk is. All right, we're just about finishing them up. Um, and I've noticed this is entirely too tiny, this jump ring that is already attached. So I am actually going to pull that off using my needle nose pliers. I also have a flat nose set over here. Um, so I'm just gonna take that out and I'm going to replace it with a wider jump ring. There we have them. Oh gosh, so cute. I love these. I think they're so cute. Guys, come on. Now, I am a little frustrated with how um, the whites don't totally match anymore. Um, I think after baking, this got a little bit darker. Um, it matches the back that I painted a little bit better. Um, this one, I probably should have sanded. I sanded this one first and it came out a lot better, but again, uh, no one's really gonna be looking at the back of these, I can't imagine. Um, and I also imagine that normally when I wear dangly earrings, I like to have my hair down, so no one's really gonna see the back anyway. Um, you know, if I were gifting these to someone, I might care a little bit more about how they look like on the back, but they're just fine, and they're so cute. I mean, come on, these are adorable. Like, this is exactly the kind of thing that I wanted, and I am so, I'm so sad that I waited so long now because these are so cute, and I would have loved to wear these at my engagement party, which I didn't do, and, oh, man, come on. I feel like I learned a lot from this, and I hope that somehow you guys did too. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye!